Could there not be the possibility that there is an alien intelligence that has been around far longer than we imagine and who may look at us like we look at and use in many ways lower life forms on this planet as a resource and even as food? Food doesn't have to be physical and these beings seem to feed off our emotions and energy. Are we really the peak of God's creation and so special and holy that nothing other than ourselves would harm, control, manipulate or consume us? Are we really that anthropocentric and ignorant to think that way? What do we really know? Humility is not our greatest strength. We usually give some quick explanation to uncomfortable questions rather than admitting, I don't know, and making more sincere efforts to gain knowledge and understanding, even if it contradicts our long-held beliefs. We trust official authority, science, religion, government to give us these answers so we can go on and make a living, not needing to think too much about the more disturbing aspects of our world. But maybe our official culture, with its institutions, is also a product of and influenced by the other, the alien mind, or predator, as Don Juan called it, hence the debunking, ridicule and avoidance of this topic in the public. Usually, if people admit that there might be other life forms visiting this planet, they tend to project human qualities into these visitors, rejecting anything that doesn't fit into this conditioned image of our space brothers. It's a typical, the aliens don't behave how they are supposed to, excuse and denial of the abduction phenomena. Who are we to even assume to know how another non-human life form thinks or behaves to begin with? Some abductees have had healings done by their alien abductors, but maybe it is for a whole different purpose than just caring for the sake of caring. A common explanation in New Age circles is that abductees attract these experiences to them, based on the popular law of attraction and create your own reality concepts, sometimes claiming it's their karma. This seems more like an escape and justification without carefully studying the phenomena. The hyped New Age teachings of today, which many people believe without questioning, shouldn't justify anything that may not look pretty. Millions of children have died in Iraq since the war. Do we also say, it's just karma? Or, they just attracted it because of their thoughts and just led them to their fate? Can we see the misuse of such popular ideas when dealing with these issues? Carla Turner states in that regard, There is a theory that says abductees who perceive their experiences in a negative way only do so because they themselves aren't spiritually or psychically advanced. Persons with higher cosmic development have positive alien encounters, so the theory goes, and those who have painful or frightening experiences are merely spiritual Neanderthals. This is a pet theory of researchers who claim that aliens, whether objectively real or not, serve as mirrors of our spiritual nature on an individual or species-wide basis. Having worked with so many decent, honest, positively oriented abductees, however, I believe this theory is wrong. It is worse than wrong, it is despicable, as despicable as blaming a rape victim for the violence committed against her. This attitude leaves many abductees feeling doubly violated, first by the aliens who took them, and then by the UFO researchers to whom they turn for explanations and help. Daniel Pinchbeck and others suggest that these entities performing the abductions are aspects of our psyche, and how we perceive them depends on how we look at them. He wrote in 2012, The Return of Quetzalcoatl, Are the visitors real or imaginary? They are both and they are neither. Any entity only possesses relative reality, including ourselves. 
entities who manifest on other forms of consciousness, such as the greys, are, at the same time, separate from us and aspects of our own psyche. We are the ground of their manifestation, and it is only by attaining a non-dual perspective that we can understand them. We are supposed to learn to work with the elementals and also alleviate their suffering. It is clear from the abduction accounts that the visitors are suffering. Like dusty insects attracted to flame, the greys yearn for our qualities of soul warmth. Despite their cunning and technological acumen, these qualities remain beyond them. They are intelligent and sentient, hence aware of their exiled status. Unable to escape their desold condition, they desire to draw humans into their lower world, sustaining their half-lives on our subtle energies. They appear to be utilizing their dream world technologies in a serious and desperate attempt to find a way out of their cul-de-sac. Everything exists and nothing exists at the same time. The aliens are separate from us and at the same time they are part of us. While there is obvious truth to such ideas from a higher perspective, these considerations are useful only for the expansion of perception, but are not useful for practical application. By simply dismissing strange aspects of reality as existing and not existing at the same time, or separate from us and at the same time part of us, is to generalize life with oversimplified spiritual perspectives such as everything is an illusion or we are all one. There is a danger to philosophize and essentially buffer up the issue without seeing the limitations of such higher truths in our state of being and existence. In general, there seems a tendency in the New Age arena and certain progressive conscious movements to come to an oversimplified application of spirituality and quantum mechanics. Also, by defaulting to the assumption that the grey aliens are beings who suffer and crave what we have, Pinchpick and others ignore much of the evidence and research that show quite a different picture. Looking at what Dr. Carla Turner and other abduction researchers have found out, it seems more likely that the grey alien is as much suffering and yearning for our soul warmth as a robot performing certain tasks. The grey aliens don't seem to be in charge, but are being used as biogenetic working drones by other more powerful beings such as reptilians or insectoids who oversee the procedures and who actually seem to be able to plug into a grey alien and work or see through them. Implanted screen memories can also hide and distort of what an abductee has really experienced and paint a false image of what the greys really are. Screen memories may be unusually vivid dreams, recollections of meeting spirits or even of friendly interaction with aliens. Hypnosis can get past screen memories to uncover another layer of experience which is most often less agreeable. I remember just lying there, trying to relax. I'd opened my eyes, I seen a red light flowing across the ceiling, which it almost looked like uh, the Aurora Borealis. Dan and Joyce Aaron say the room was dark except for the unusual light, which they describe as about four or five feet in diameter. They say it hovered over the baby's crib at the foot of their bed where their one-year-old daughter Heather slept. Dan says that when he tried to get up, he found himself immobilized. That was the most frightening feeling I guess I've ever had in my whole life, is not being able to move. I was screaming for him to help me because I couldn't move. And I didn't know that he was paralyzed too. And we both sat up in the bed at the same time. And I said, what the hell was that? Dan agreed to an on-camera hypnosis session with Carpenter, during which he revisited that memorable night in 1976, the night he saw the red light over the baby's crib. This time, under hypnosis, he remembers more. He recalls cowering in the corner of his bed as he watched alien beings take his daughter Heather from her crib. Went to the crib. He went to the crib. He took her. He took her. Was 
Under separate hypnosis, Dan's wife, Joyce, recalled the same sequence of events. They both say little beings marched them outside, and together the family was floated onto a spaceship. I never wanted it to happen to my children. I didn't realize until later that it had. But when they took her, I couldn't do anything. Abductions start as early as infancy and can occur till late in life. Some people have been abducted hundreds of times. Many abductees are living in fear, not knowing when the next taking will happen, not being able to prevent it, not being able to talk about it for obvious ridicule in the public. Many need to even hide these experiences from their families. Some are so utterly confused that they go mad, even committing suicide. Carla Turner suggested a number of steps abductees could take in the face of alien provocation. Educate yourself about the phenomenon. There is some control in knowledge. Let go of fear. It is through fear that negative entities maintain control. Anger is a more effective defense than fear. Abductees should be aware of how they are reacting. They should learn to step out of themselves and to maintain perspective. Maintain a good quality of life. Be realistic about what can and cannot be done. Stay close to your families. Confide, you don't need the burden of carrying this around without being able to talk about it. Abductees have reported that anger and getting upset at the entities does actually help. Also by educating themselves and learning more about the abduction and UFO phenomena, they can create an awareness which seems to offer protection. As the saying goes, knowledge protects, ignorance endangers. I think we need to recognize that deceptions are employed at almost every level of this interaction to keep abductees from knowing about the actual events and the actual entities involved in these encounters. To me, maybe I'm just a suspicious sort, this implies that there's something they don't want us to know about. And often what seems implied from the reports is that there is something within us, the humans, something of which we could be capable, something of resistance or altering of this scenario that the abductors absolutely do not want us to be aware of. They go to great lengths to program our thinking about our encounters with them, that we are subordinate, that we are helpless, or that we are dependent, or that we belong to them, the, it, the list goes on and on. And they go to a great deal of trouble to convince us, in every way that they can, that we can do nothing about controlling these situations. The good news is that in a number of cases in the past couple of years, that hasn't proven to be true. Abductees are finding more and more specific instances in which they are able to resist the illusion <coughs> suggestions, in which they are able to say no to procedures, and in fact when they have been able to break free of actual controls. This to me is a great step forward and I think it's going to be something growing with any, with any luck. We're going to find abductees are realizing there are ways to, to change this entire pattern of activity. But what is very disturbing is the complete denial of this issue, not only in the mainstream scientific community, but especially in the progressive truth and New Age movement. The topic of alien abductions is mostly treated as if it is non-existent. And that is the best way to keep a secret. <laughs>